my friends welcome i'm daily fix and we are going to be doing something that i've been putting off for a long time this is going to be a stellaris guide and this is going to be a long guide because i don't like i don't like uh, hundreds of hours of gameplay and with a few videos and then just crop it all up into one video and that's going to be my guide now there's tons of questions you might have and there's tons of things that I might bring towards you so we're going to be making this a complete series I've decided to go with the Commonwealth of Men basically I don't like a series that is just too passive we need wars we wars will teach you the game at a very rapid pace and they will teach you how to deal with certain threats say your enemy is overwhelming to you how are you going to deal with that and there are ways of dealing with that, there are, and we will see that because of the difficulty that I will put this game on. Now, you just bought the game, and you have the vanilla game. So, it means that you will not have species like this, the mega corporation. You will not have species that are machines, or that are hive minds. And there's a few more, there's a few in here that you will not have. So, if you... Are enjoying your vanilla game I would suggest buying three DLCs out of every every one that you can get and those are the apocalypse DLC the utopian DLC and the mega corporation DLCs why why those three because those are the big ones those are the big DLCs that brought a lot of features to the game everything else is going to be considered a story pack DLC and they will bring lore, they will bring uh, event change, they will bring a lot. And you will see those in this series because I have all of them. And there are species portrait DLCs as well. So if you would go to, uh, let's say, um, create a new one. And appearances, there are more appearances with me than there are probably um, with you. And that's all because of species portraits and stuff like that. So let's go back. Commonwealth of Men, a military dictatorship. Basically, it says you'll get a ruler and you'll only have to select a new one once that ruler dies. Um, naturalistic zeal is you have a 10% less war exhaust gain. So you'll gain less war exhaust. What it all is that you'll see as soon as we uh, declare war on an empire or are being declared on, which is also a good uh, possibility claiming influence cost it will cost you 10% less claiming territory that belongs to an empire um, so yeah that's basically it it will cost you 10% less claiming space that belongs to another empire uh, you have the distinguished admiralty uh, ship firing rate is 10% more than those that uh, do not have this trait uh, admiral level cap now in the past you could go to level 5 no problems there but that changed we can now have admirals and 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 leaders that are I believe like level 8 or 9 I can't be sure maybe even 10 it's been a long time since I've actually seen the top level um, leader usually they'll die fleet command limit plus 10 so we'll have more normally you'll start with a command limit of 20 and you will get multiple fleets quite early on in the game and this one will have a um, a fleet command limit of 20 so which is absolutely great a xenophobe oh my other species Ugh, we don't like them we we, we, we want to stay away from uh, go go away you you alien species we don't want you um, but starbase influence cost negative 20 that costs us 20% less of building a starbase and population growth speed is uh, plus 10 also we can purge aliens we can enslave aliens and that will decrease the opinion of other species in the galaxy. We cannot give them the full citizenship right. We cannot give them the full military service right. And we cannot welcome refugees. So basically is they will not become uh, leaders in any way or form. They cannot become leaders. Full citizenship will grant them leadership. Full military service will grant them military leadership. So that will not do. Fanatic uh, militarist claiming cost is negative 20. So this 
with the um, there you go with the claiming influence over here is a claiming cost negative 30 this will put us on the path of a lot of wars because wars are cheaper for us it's cheaper for us to claim and to take over than to you know build up ship firing rate is plus 20 percent which really works well with uh, the ship firing rate plus 10 over here so again 30 on claiming, 30 on firing rate. And that's great. That's absolutely amazing. We're adaptive. So we have 10% more inhabitability uh, from planets. And it ranges from 80, 60, 40, 20. And for us, it's going to be uh, 90, 70, 50, and 30. Uh, nomadic, so our migration is plus 15%. And our resettlement cost is negative 25%. And population consumer goods is more. We are wasteful. We are human beings. So, the story. Um, the United sponsored um, Julius's in the initiative oversaw the construction of six great arc ships in the lower Earth orbit at the end of the 21st century. These ships, carrying a quarter million colonists each, were sent through a recently discovered subspace phenomenon on the outer edges of the Oort Cloud, a small unstable wormhole. None were heard from again, and the destabilized wormhole vanished, yet unknown, uh, yet un unbeknownst, <laughs> what a word, to Earth. One of the Ark ships survived the passage and established a flourishing colony on the Lurish alien moon. The pioneers who tamed this world were determined to realize humanity's manifest de uh, uh, destiny, dominion over the galaxy at any cost. I love that. I love that. Now, galaxy size is going to be huge. We are going to be doing... Shall we do the typical one? Four arms? Yeah, sure, why not? We'll go with AI empires. Four, uh, all, all of it. 30. I like wars, like I said. Advanced alien starts. We put off um, fallen empires and marauders. Marauders will be new to you. It is believe part of the apocalypse. Uh, apocalypse DLC. Tradition cost. We uh, I increased the world habitats to two, so we'll have more to colonize, and that's good for you as well. Primitive uh, primitive sp uh, species or civilizations. It's the normal one. Crisis strength. You'll get to see that. I hope. Uh, mid game, end game, and victory uh, year is turned off. We are playing on Grand Admiral. Scaling is off. AI aggressiveness is normal. You can put this on uh, on high. Uh, unfortunately, it will also make it so that your AI is going to be a bit weird. Your AI, your uh, alien empires, are going to do everything to war, and that will most likely ruin their economy and it makes the game even, even I believe easier to play if you manage to go into mid game uh, placement is random advanced neighbors is off governors I've put on these are all uh, normal apart from this one uh, I believe that is either off or one or two I like to have two planets because I need to colonize for my species Iron Man mode is uh, is off because this is a YouTube series Let's get going. And this is uh, one of the portraits from Utopia. Man, these guys are amazing with uh, how the game looks. It's, it's, it's absolutely, it is really, really cool. I've been uh, loving this game for a long time now. And Paradox have been, have been very kind to me. So uh, that makes it even more desirable for me as a small channel to play that. Um, okay, so let me uh, try not to destroy this entire line of text. More than a century has passed since the great ship, the great arc ship, the um, the, the cry, cryantinum carried a quarter million of our ancestors from the distant earth to the garden world. The garden world, wow. We have come to, um, we have come to known as uh, unity. So this is, our planet is called unity. Great. After a long and uh, perilous journey, the colonists rejoined, uh, rejoiced with the first saw sunlight again. Yeah, let, let me just skip this. Th th there's no way I'll, 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 I'll not butcher this. So this is your starting system. 
And there's a lot of buttons, a lot of buttons. Uh, trade routes, uh, sector maps, we got union map mode for, for those who have started factions. Uh, actually, uh, federations. Empire map mode. Diplomatic map mode, who likes you, who doesn't? Opinion map mode, is who thinks highly of you and who doesn't? Uh, the AR attitude, what is, your, uh, what is the attitude of this alien towards you? And you can select other empires and you can see whatever it is that it will bring to them. As well as the neighbor map mode. Uh, so you can easily see who's your neighbor. Who do you want to do declare on and who do you want to be claiming on? Because I think um, that increasing your borders is important. Now, before we do anything else, I think it's time that we uh, press E, zoom a bit out and see how is our territory. And you can see that this actually, um, this is a very important system. Even actually, I would say this is an important system. But for defense purposes, we could go over here. And by the looks of it, there is only... Yeah, there is only one way out of our territory. Uh, this one and this one. So that's two. So we want to make sure that we get to those areas um, quite as soon as possible. Now, it doesn't mean that you will need to rush beeline over there. Also, this uh, scientist is an archaeology. An archaeology? Expeditionist and archaeologist. Wow. Yeah, way to go. Now, press the survey button. Hold shift. And um, I will start with this guy going into this direction. And once he's there, we will probably have another one. Now, we're going to be uh, unpausing because it doesn't really matter. Above here. This guy can now do his thing, right? And we're building up. Good for the series. Uh, energy. And minerals, your construction stuff, your food is, well, food. We have our consumer goods, which is needed to keep our people happy. And um, it will gain us uh, research as well, by the looks of it. Um, go, let me read this thing out. It is an advanced resource that um, represents the various gadgets, luxurious and goods necessary to give your pops a good life. And to perform intellectual jobs such as research, you can gain more by this and that. Okay, that's fine. This and that we'll get to later. Uh, alloys is for your ship. Influence is for claiming as well as building star bases. Unity is traditions, research, strategic resources. And those have various, various pluses. And we'll get to those once we get them. Empire Sprawl is at the moment... Your administrative capacity is 30, meaning as soon as you go over 30, and that is with planets, it is with sectors, it is with your districts on your planets as well. You will start to get a penalty, and that penalty will be stronger and higher and whatever. Um, your sector, your planet, your population, your stations, and your naval capacity, those are your main important buttons. So, let's see, what do we have here? The hunt for the... Uh, the hierarchy of something like that. We have found no traces of the fourth. Island. Okay, so this is actually we are going to be hunting for a, one of the other colony ships. That's what that's what's so good about these premates. They have a bit of law. And um, let's make it so. Um, that also brings us to the following, and that's to this bar on the right here, yeah, on the left. Sorry. Your contacts. Um, who did you meet during your game? Um. We've only met the Commonwealth of Men, but all of the empires, all of the uh, fallen empires, all of the, um, the trade species, whatever, it's all going to be in here. Primitives. Everyone you can find in here. Situational log is just like that pop-up you just saw. It is a event that you can do. And by clicking like tracking, you'll see there are some points of interest that the game wants us to go. Uh, but we're not going to do that right now. Anomalies is... When you have a research opportunity in a system, it will be shown over here. So if you ever get um, too many research jobs and you'll say, you know what, leave that for now. And that's something that I will be doing a lot early on in the game. Um, you'll find them here and eventually you will do. Uh, victory conditions is um, there are, I believe, yeah, the 73 species of 73, the 37 species. And we are... Well, the weakest one of them all, and we haven't discovered anyone else. So, we want to do something about that, eventually. So, let's get away from here. Market. You can buy stuff over here. 
and you can buy energy or you can you can you can yeah you can buy energy by selling minerals food and everything else or you can buy all of this with energy there's also a slave market which we'll get into now um, we'll get to this uh, soon it, this that, that doesn't matter it will just um, collect itself you will see a plus after that minus uh, soon enough and it will just tick so no worries no worries you will not waste your research it doesn't work like that planets and sectors all of your planets all of your sectors and this is going to be important also for this series because you can find you can actually put your researches or your resources into a stockpile and all of your planets and sectors will use those and what your planet is going to be doing you can decide for every planet yourself expansion planner is when you have so many territory there and there's so many planets and you've lost track you can actually see or ask what planet that um, that there are of a certain habitat and you can claim it I've never used it to be honest and um, you have the policies now policies is, is kind of large and we'll get into that uh, not in this episode but we'll uh, probably do that next time edicts is uh, a specialties and we'll get to those later as well traditions will uh, get a pop-up layer from ship designs um, is basically where you construct uh, actually design your ships fleet manager is to design your fleets where you can say I want those corvettes I want those destroyers I want those cruisers in there technology let's click it you will have multiple uh, scientists you actually have three that's why I usually will roll with three scientists because I want these scientists to train in their ships and once these guys die I want them to go in here is there no one better than him um no no there's no one else that is a bit of a shame mm, okay Let, let's stop here for a second we still have to do our research job but this is your shipyard and you can buy and build ships over here of course by clicking the shipyard and adding the science ship now the reason i'm going to do this now is because we are just over 200 energy credits and you will need 200 energy credits at the early game just to make sure that you'll uh, be able to buy yourself another scientist. Now that is going to be working. Let's get back. Out of all of these jobs, there are a few things. You will get the edict in this one, capacity overload. This will give you a plus 20% of uh, energy credits for 11 years. And that's pretty big. It, it will You will run this. I, I can promise you in every game, you will run this. Your um, physics research plus 20% is a flat bonus. Uh, actually, it's not a flat bonus. It's a bonus that just adds 20% on your research total. So 18 and then plus 20%. So 10% would be uh, 1.8 and 20% would be 3.6, I hope. So this will add uh, 3 points, which is uh, quite nice. But me being a warring faction, I will usually go for... Um, weapons now, as for society what options are they off-world trading company produces two trading value for each trading up now you will see that if you go here on the starbase there is a trading up and the collection range is plus one um, this will remain plus one but um, what it will produce you is for every trade it will get you uh, two for uh, it will get you two trade value in, uh, instead of the one that you'll uh, usually have so it, it's a nice bonus uh, once again flat bonus and you have food production uh, one is uh, is going to be for your planets and one is going to be on your star bases now I, I usually don't go for this early on um, and out of all of these options I'll go for the flat bonus for now I keep calling it flat bonus, so we'll, we'll roll with it. Ooh. Ooh, decision time. What? Technology. Uh, afterburners will make your ships faster by adding a module to your ship. Uh, coil guns is uh, weapons, and as well as you have the construction speed, is going to be... It, so it's 25% it's faster to build corvettes, and they will cost 5% more. It's really nice. Uh, I'm going for the weapons. Because I need weapon superiority. Yeah, I need those. Uh, let's 
on pause because we were paused there for a second. Now we have this guy who will go into here. By doing it, you can click the portrait over here. Assign a leader. Go to scientist. Let's see, what do we have? Um, there's a bunch here that will do a, um, a plus to a certain research. And this one is in the industrial uh, tab. We have the carefree one, so anomaly research speed plus 35. But we also have anomaly discovery chance, and discovery chance is quite nice because discovering anomalies is amazing. Now, for you, I'm going to be sending just over here. I want to see what is in here. And the further the further he gets into this territory over here, the more we will see the fog of war will be lifted. And with that, I'm going to end the video. Now, next time, we're going to be talking more about policies, edicts, traditions, ship design, fleet manager, factions claim, all of that good stuff while the game is running. Because I don't like it when the game is paused for too long. Thank you all for watching. I, don't, I really hope this, uh, this series is going to be useful to you. In the comment section, you can place your questions. I will put them into a text file. And I will uh, make sure that I'll get to all of them. Some are just easy to answer and I will just do that immediately. Some I'll get back into a video and I will let you know. We'll get back to you in a video. Okay, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you um, next time, which probably is going to be tomorrow. Yeah, goodbye.